so I, it's been ages since I've come on here and I thought I'm doing my nails. So I'm going to do a video um, for you all to see sort of my step by step and how I go about doing them. I get quite a lot of questions in regards to whether it's the uh, CND shaper or the CND builder that they you need to use. So I'm just going to run through that quickly while I do that as well. I also get a lot of questions in regards to the cuticle prep and um you know how to go about doing that and to get the best out of your treatments um, and the sets that you do for your clients so i'm going to run through a bit of what i do there and i just thought i would hop on here quickly say hello to you all put my face again on the camera just so you get used to seeing me rather than just my fingers and uh, we're going to get straight into it all right guys right then so guys what we're going to do is we're going to start off by e-filing the previous design off the nails so I use this machine here which is the Cooper Manny Pro and this is one of my willow e-file bits that I'm going to use um, to take this down obviously if you're not changing an e-file then you'll have to use a hand file so with the plexi gel system um, a lot of frequently asked questions that I hear a lot are whether you need to completely soak off every time okay you don't need to be soaking this off every single time because having to put in even with the awfully fast where you've got your macadamia oil and your vitamin e if you're putting that on every three weeks and you're soaking the product right back to the nails um over time you are going to dehydrate those nails and if you're going to be applying the plexigel system back on again then you're really wasting a lot of time by removing that product so all you need to be doing is e-filing the color the design back to the plexigel obviously avoiding any contact here with your natural nail plate you were just removing the previous design um and then we'll i'll show you how I would do an infill okay so I'm just going to make a start on this now and you can just watch me work moving from one side to the other just to remove this product off and you can see how quickly and easily it comes off with an e-file but as I say if you're not trained in e-file then you are going to have to manually do this so anybody that isn't trained, it is most definitely worth investing in a good quality e-file course to quicken up your treatments with people. And also, it's, it's going to, in the long run, save you so much strain on your wrist doing it. So move on to the next one. And you can see how quickly... You can plough through using an e-file as opposed to if you're having to manually file this. When you file in, whether it's with an e-file or a hand file, it's always best to pull the skin back that you work in so you're not going to catch you're not going to catch it and again whether you're doing it with an e-file or whether you're doing it with a hand file you've got to keep that file moving you cannot keep going over the same area because what will happen is whether it's an e-file or a hand file if you keep working that same area and not moving over to the next you're going to build up heat in the nail from the friction so you do need to make sure you are moving it constantly and not staying in that one position Now, obviously, if you were doing a client as well, you'd want to be wearing gloves because of all the dust that comes off. I don't bother wearing gloves when I'm doing myself. Personally, I know some people do and then they cut the finger holes in to show you, but I can't see the point myself. So we move on to this one. 
you get the idea. So what I tend to do when I do my left hand, because I am, uh, sorry, my right hand, because I am right-handed and I'm having to use my non-dominant hand to uh, do it, what I tend to do is get the majority of the product off and then I then come in with my hand file closer to the cuticle area just because obviously I haven't got as much control with my left hand as my right and obviously I don't want to catch my own natural nail plate so what I'll do is I'll work as close as I can taking the majority off of the e-file and then I will always leave a little bit closer around the cuticle to just come in with my hand file on myself obviously on a client I wouldn't because I'd be using, using my right hand So I don't know if you can see on this one here, so where I wasn't putting cuticle oil on myself, what happens is because the, the cuticle oil will help to keep the natural nail underneath flexible, it starts to dry. And then what happens is the natural nail will then start to pull away from the plexi gel and it started to lift in the corner and Naughty Me picked that bit off. So you'll see that's why that bit isn't there. So this is why it's so important when you're doing uh, these sets for clients that you do really let them know the importance of their aftercare you know if they're wanting these sets to last them you know three and four weeks then they are going to have to follow up with some kind of aftercare themselves in the form of cuticle oil um, if their cuticles are bad then I, I would tend to advise for them to use um, the cuticle um, eraser because that will help to soften the cuticles um, and exfoliate them. So for anyone wondering what extractor I'm using here, it is the, um, let me just switch it off a second. It is the Nail Chemi uh, desktop one. Um, it's fantastic. It's portable. Um, so if you're a mobile tech, it's ideal for that. Um, I'll just show you quickly. So that's obviously it comes off. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can get a better look. Um, and then this is your filter. And then this obviously is your fan that when you switch on. Now this filter, you can buy these individually. So you can obviously um, have, I've got backup ones as well. Um, but obviously you can clean these so you can obviously get rid of the dust in between. I always tend to give it a hoover as well and then give it a uh, spray um, and then put it back in. Um, so that is the dust extractor that I use for anybody wanting to know. And it is very, very good. If you can't afford one of the bigger units or you haven't got the space for one of the bigger units, this is ideal. OK, I'm just going to zoom back in again. OK, so that's the nails um, e-filed um, and ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and shape my nail now. And obviously anywhere that there is any lift on these, which to be honest with you, the plexi gel tends to be pretty good. I don't really tend to get any lift on these, especially on my left hand. I do, however, get it a little bit on my right. So all these are OK. I've got it slightly on my thumb here, you'll see. Um, so on my uh, left hand, I would use the e-file to remove that. Um, and again, that's something if you do an e-file course, you'll be taught how to do that. But um, obviously, because it's on my right hand, I don't actually want to um, come behind it and catch it. So I'm going to actually hand file that off. All right. So files that you use, it, it varies really, whatever your sort of preference is. And again, you if you're doing your training you should be taught on the different files that you're using and the different grits so i'm just going to show you this is my one so it's used to death so all the um writings come off it so i'm just going to show you some new ones here out of these packets that i use so i use the nsi jura files because i think they are absolutely fantastic i haven't found a file as good as these yet um 
to be honest with you now i found these i haven't really tried any others since these um because they are amazing they do last really well you can clean these you can sterilize these you can sort of uh, wash them in soapy water and then you can spray them down so i use uh this flex side here to kill any bacteria once i've used, once i've sort of um put them in soapy water and got rid of anything and then you let them dry and then i use the same file on each client so basically i'd have one file per client and then that along with their cuticle stick and their uh, white buffing block that is theirs and that will go in um a paper not a plastic because obviously it'll breed so i put it in a little paper uh packet um and that goes in my filing cabinet then and that's theirs so i would never use this one file on every single person it's literally an individual file per person so you've got your 180 grits and you'll uh, recognize that on the nsi files because it's green and then you also have your 100 which is like a pinky purple color they also do the one uh, the uh, 150 as well <clears throat> they haven't had them in stock for a while which is why i've got these so you should be aware of this, but the lower the grit, the lower the number, the, the harsher the grit, okay? So out of these two here, this purple one would be more abrasive than the green one because the number is lower, okay? So the lower the number, the harsher the grit. The higher the number, the finer the grit. So this is why um, I'll show you on these ones as well. These are actually uh, OPI ones. So you've got this one here, which is a thousand, four thousand. You've got a two twenty, two eighty buffer. Um, so this one here is um, obviously a higher number than these. So again, this will just take off any surface shine, and then your two eighty will just take out any uh, sort of scratches or anything on the plate. And then this one here would be um, just to help shine up the natural nail. So if you're using it on a natural nail you would use this to then just take out any sort of uh, lines or scratches or anything. And then that one you would really use to really buff up and give that mirror shine. Um, but obviously we don't use these on enhancements because really what you want to be doing is just uh, taking the top layer, uh, the top shine off. Um, so again, so there you follow. But again, this is something that you should know anyway. So I am currently using the green one so this one is the 180 now you will also find as well on some files you'll have one number so it might say 150 180 that just means one side is um one sort of um grit and then the other side will be the other grit so sometimes you'll have that as well so yeah so i'm just going to be using the 180 grit because i don't need anything too it's 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 a builder gel so it's not acrylic it's not a, a hard gel so you don't need to be using anything that is too harsh um so i'm going to come in with the 180 i am going to reshape these nails because you know they've been on for about three and a bit weeks now so they need to come down in length and i also need to just tidy up the shape now one thing that i have noticed um on people's and it's something that i've done in the past as well when you are uh, right-handed or left-handed you will naturally when you're filing somebody's nails you will naturally put more pressure on so i find i'm not sure which side it is it might be this side or it might be that side but i find that i have to be very very careful when i'm doing it because when you hold a nail and you look at it because you're heavy-handed you will naturally bring one side in more than the others. And it's something that I notice quite a lot on Instagram on people's pictures where they've done a lovely set of nails, but on all of them, it's kind of like coming over to one side where they've worked too much on one side and haven't worked as much on the opposite side. So that's something that you need to be aware of. And the way to do that is to obviously do one side and then the other. Um, rather than all on one side and then on the other side now your filing technique um and routine is probably again another one of the most important parts of any service because your filing technique is what is going to keep your set consistent so every single nail will be the same um and every single set you do will be the same if you change your filing uh, technique halfway through a set you will start to see inconsistent results 
So it's fair enough if you want to have one uh, routine for one person and a slightly different routine for another person, that's fine as long as you keep it the same. But if you start by, I don't know, filing here and then doing this and then your sets are not going to be consistent. So just bear that in mind. If you can get yourself into a good filing routine, that is going to make the hell of a difference when it comes to the consistency of the shape and the look of your sets. So what I would always do is start with your free edge. So I would come in and I would take whatever length down that I need to do. So you do that first. Once you've taken your length down and you've got it to where you need to. And again, if you've got an e-file, you can use the e-file to do that. If you're taking a lot of length down, if you're only taking a little bit, then I would suggest you use a hand file so you don't take too much. Because once you've taken it, you cannot put it back on. Uh, you would then come in and work your side walls. So obviously you want your nails or your enhancements to be... Um, nice and tapered you don't want them wider um, and bulky so you would then come in and work your side walls now once you've worked your side walls and you need to be doing these parallel once you've worked your side walls you can then come in and start working so sort of, i work around the cuticle so i work because i'm right-handed i tend to work this side first so you angle your file slightly and again with the dura files they're really good because you've got that nice curved there or the straight edge now if i'm working near the cuticle i'm going to work use the curved edge because it, it fits nicely whereas if you're using the straight you're likely to then cut in to people and again i have told you in previous videos but if you're using a brand new file it is important that you score the edges of these because these are so sharp it's like getting a paper cut and the same with uh, your sanding bands if you're using a sanding band on your e-file you need to obviously score the edges of those as well um, so yeah, so what you need to do is you need to angle your file and you're coming in and you're, you're doing this. So you, you're taking, you're working around the cuticle. Um, so where there's any, uh, lift, if there's any there, um, and you're just neatening that up. Okay. So I always work this side first and then I will come in and I'll work the opposite side around the cuticle. So that's the cuticle area works. And then what you want to do is just go over the top. So you either go over this way or you come down the barrel. Okay. Um, now, obviously, once you've put your product on, it's slightly different. Now, with the builder gels, you can do it so that you don't require any refining. Um, if you're having to build a bit of an apex, then you will need to come in with a bit of refinement. Um, and again, I will discuss that a little bit later, how like how to work out whether you need to do that or, or not. Um, but your filing technique would be the same thing. Your free edge, you start at the side, other side wall, cuticle, cuticle. Um, and then what you need to be doing is working on these sides here. So if you've built up the product you don't want it wider at the side so this is where you need to then sort of come across here and take out this bit here okay but you want to be leaving this area here where your apex is so you are still keeping. so it's a nice sleek shape so when you look at it from the side it's got a nice shape when you look at it down the barrel it's got a nice shape um you know and it, it looks nice all over so your filing routine and your technique is so so important guys okay so i'm just going to come in and file these so you can just watch me work now and also when you are filing the nails you need to make sure that you're looking at them from your angle okay when you're doing a client but you also need to hold that client's hand up and view the nails from their angle so if you need to turn their hand round and hold it from this angle so that you can see you know so like for example here this one might be going off that way because from my angle it looks fine so you, this is where you need to look at it from two different angles to get the um get them nice and even all right guys Check it from both angles, make sure it's nice and even, and then you're coming in and you're working up the side. So on your infills, you will want to be coming and just lightly, we don't need to be, you know, really going at it. We're lightly, so I'm coming up and I'm taking the file off and I'm coming back down and taking the file off. I'm not sawing backwards and forwards over the same. It might look like that, but I'm literally coming up and off, up and off, so it's like that okay and then you're working your way around the cuticle so as i say on an infill it is important that you are going over the natural nail as well as the infill area because you need to remove that surface shine and this is why you don't want to be using an, a nail file that is too coarse 
because you don't want to be taking loads of the layers of the natural nail off you are literally just removing that natural shine okay and then you're just coming back over and working up to that center so with me i am having to turn my finger quite a lot because i'm doing it on myself okay So on here, on mine, I don't know if you can see, there's a slight bit of lift in here. So that needs to come off because if you leave that there and you put new product down, whatever is underneath that, you are going to be trapping. So that's got to any lift at the infill stage has to come away. You have to remove that because you don't want any bacteria or anything getting trapped underneath that. Okay, and then you do that on all of your nails, fold them, get them into shape, all right?